Spinosaurs are a diverse lineage of theropods that with their crocodilian skulls, giant arms and in some cases extraordinary sails truly stand out amongst their theropod contemporaries. Their history of discovery, however, has not been the best for this unique family of dinosaurs. Even the study of the most well-known member of the family, Spinosaurus, was suddenly cut short during a World War II bombing raid, which for nearly the rest of the 20th century heavily impacted our understanding of these animals. It wasn't until this discovery and description of baryonyx and other related animals that the world of the Spinosaurs began to reveal its wonders, and nowadays a great deal is known about this once mysterious family. The subject of this video, Irritator, is a member of this family, and its initial description was a muddled one, to say the least. Irritator's story began when fossil poachers excavated a large chalk concentration containing the rear end of a large skull with lower jaws near the town of Santana do Cariri. The fossil was then acquired by dealers who illegally sold it to Rupert Wilde of the State Museum of Natural History Stuttgart in Germany. The identity of the skull was initially assumed to be that of a large pterosaur, since the region where the fossil was found, in the Chapadado Arapi Plateau, is famous for its large quantity of pterosaur finds like animals like Tapajara and Tupandactylus, and the museum often bought such finds from such locations. As the fossil promised to be a unique discovery, German and British pterosaur experts were contracted to study the specimen, with a paper describing it as a pterosaur already having been submitted for publication. However, authors Eberhard Frey and Hans Dieter Seuss were disabused by this though through peer reviewers, who, in who instead suggested the fossil to belong to that of a theropod dinosaur, and not a form of pterosaur, as originally thought. The skull of the newly discovered dinosaur was flattened sideways, and as is common with most fossils, was partly crushed. Evident corrosion on certain bones indicated that acid preparation had been attempted, and the collector's attempt in dissolving parts of the matrix containing the fossil inadvertently affected it. As well as this, in hopes for the fossil to look more complete and thus more valuable, the fossil traders severely obscure the skull beneath a layer of plaster, a widespread practice amongst local collectors in the, in the region. The buyers of the specimen were unaware of the modifications until the fossil was sent to universities in the United Kingdom for CT scan imaging, where it was revealed that the collectors had tried to reconstruct the skull by grafting pieces of the maxilla onto the front of the rostrum and or snout. The skull designated SMNS58022 became the holotype specimen of a new genus named Irritated Challengeri in February 1996, when it was first described by paleontologists David Martell, Arthur Cruikshank, Eberhard Frey, Philip Small and Malcolm Clark. In this paper, Martell and his team wrote that the generic name of Irritator came from the irritation that the authors felt when discovering that the snout of the animal had been artificially elongated. The type species, Irritator challengeri, was named after Professor Challenger, a character in Arthur Conan Doyle's classic novels, specifically The Lost World, where in the story, a plateau is discovered in the Amazon basin of South America, where prehistoric animals, particularly dinosaurs, are discovered to still be alive. Martel and his team originally classified Irritator as a Maniraptor and dinosaur in the Clade Bulletosauria, a group now not in use, as a close relative to the feathered Ornithomimosaurs and Truodontids. Given that its dental morphology, long snout and assumed fin-shaped crest were features unknown in other Maniraptoran dinosaurs, the researchers erected the new family Irritoroidae within the clay due to Irritator's distinct appearance. The researchers recognised the specimen's affinities with Spinosaurus, in that they both had very similar shaped and non-serrated teeth, but noted that the latter's mandible would not conform with the front of Irritator's upper jaw. As well as this, Compsognathus and Ornitholestes also bore no serrations on some of their teeth, giving credence to a potentially Maniraptor and Irritator. These claims were questioned by Alexander Kellner, a leading expert in pterosaurs and a notable paleontologist in Brazil, who found that the Irritator skull lacked the one distinguishing feature diagnosed with Maniraptorans at the time, which was having a dugal or cheekbone forming part of the anti-orbital fenstra. He also pointed out that since the Irritator holotype lacked the tip of the snout, knowing if Spinosaurus' dentary could complement it or not was not possible until more specimens were described to find out if this would actually be the case. Based on these comparisons with Spinosaurus, 
Kellner resolved Irritator as a Spinosaurid. With this newfound knowledge, Martel and his team made a detailed redescription of the specimen in 2002 after excavating away the calcareous rock matrix that obscured much of the fossil. This new redescription of the now fully prepared specimen negated many of Martel and the colleagues' original observations, which were largely based on misinterpretations of the damaged and concealed skull. The estimated length of the complete skull revealed itself to be 24 centimetres shorter than previously proposed, and what was thought to be a prominent head crest proved only to be an unattached, intermediate bone fragment, although some reconstructions of Irritator have depicted it with such headgear. Furthermore, additional skull bones were identified and, as in the previous study, the team regarded Spinosaurus as the most similar taxon to Irritator, but this time, instead of basing relation off of appearance alone, this time it was taxonomic. In fact, since little was known of Spinosaurus's skull material at the time, the authors even suggested a possible junior synonymy of Irritator with Spinosaurus, meaning that Irritator could just be a specimen of Spinosaurus. As more of Spinosaurus's skull became known, this thinking has since been refuted, and the two taxa are now considered distinct. Although the exact site of discovery is uncertain due to how the specimen was obtained, the specimen most likely stems from the Romaldo Formation, previously designated to the Romaldo member of the then Santana Formation. This assessment was made through questioning of local fossil dealers, who hinted at a locality near the village of Bugsix, close to Santana do Cariri. Since the Romaldo Formation is indeed exposed around this area, and the rock matrix encasing the holotype has the same colour as well as texture as the rocks at the Romaldo Formation, this locality is now regarded as the most probable site of discovery. After the re-examination of the skull, Irritator is now known to have as of yet the most completely preserved Spinosaurid skull known, only missing parts of the maxilla, premaxilla and dentary. Alongside Irritator, another Spinosaurid specimen was also recovered from the same time and place, named Angatarama limae by Kellner and Campos in February 1996. The holotype specimen consisted of an isolated snout tip, extracted from a calcareous nodule using a technique originally developed for pterosaur fossils. The generic name of Angatarama derives from a protective spirit in the Aboriginal Tipi Indian culture of Brazil of the same name, and the specific name honouring the late Brazilian paleontologist Murio Lima, who informed Kellner of the specimen in 1991. In 1997, the validity of the Angatarama specimen was called into question by paleontologists Alan Sharig and Angela Milner, who considered Angatarama a likely junior synonym of Irritator noting that both genera had retracted nostrils, long jaws, and characteristic Spinosaurid dentition, as well as both coming from the same time period and formation. Paul Serino and colleagues in 1998 further agreed with this possibility, and in addition observed that the holotype of Angatarama seemed to almost complete that of Irritator, meaning that they could potentially be the same specimen. Kellner and Campos in 2000, and Elaine Machado in 2005, expressed the opinion that the fossils did indeed belong to two different and distinct genera, noting that the holotype of Angatarama was clearly more laterally flattened than that of Irritator. A review of both fossils by Marco Salis and Caesar Schultz in 2017 further noted that the specimens also differed in other aspects of their preservation, with the Irritator specimen being brighter in colour and affected by a vertical crack, while the Angatarama specimen bears many cavities with the damage to the teeth of the Irritator holotype being much less severe in comparison. Sales and Schultz also identified a possible point of overlap, that being the third left maxillary tooth, which seemed to line up with both specimens, but also that the skull of Angatarama could have been larger than that of Irritator, based on the proportions of the closely related genus, Baryonyx. They therefore concluded that the two specimens do not belong to the same individual, but that synonymy at the genus level will need to be further verified by more overlapping remains, to come to a full conclusion. If Angatarama and Irritator are found to be specimens of the same genus, then Irritator would be the valid scientific name under rules of priority, as it was named almost a month earlier than Angatarama.
Moving on from taxonomy, the size of Irritator has been estimated to be considerably smaller than that of other known Spinosaurids, estimated at between 6 to 8 metres in length and a tonne in weight. Interestingly, from looking into the holotype of Irritator, it was noted that some of the skull bones had not yet fully fused, indicating that the specimen was in fact a subadult and that Irritator once fully grown could have been bigger, but by how much is as of yet unknown. Irritator also possesses a thin sagittal crest, which, constructed from elongated nasal bones, is commonplace in Spinosaurids, and while the shape and height of the structure is unknown of in Irritator, it is known to have served a possible display function when the animal was still alive, the crest possibly being brighter in colour to the rest of the body to stand out, like modern day hornbills, as an example. In life, Irritator's environment in what is now known as the Romaldo Formation was from what we understand a tropical one, largely corresponding to the present day climate in Brazil. The formation has been interpreted as a coastal lagoon, with a regular freshwater influence which would have contended with cycles of transgressing and regressing sea levels. This lagoon-like environment is what led to the Romaldo formation to be considered a lagostat, a site that is known to preserve fossils, whether they be animals or plants, in excellent condition. The site has thus preserved a wide variety of animals in exquisite detail, from turtles, dinosaurs and especially pterosaurs. The interactions for which the latter would have had with Irritator I will discuss soon. As well as the habitat, the taphonomy of the Irritator holotype, the changes between death and fossilization, has been discussed by some researchers. Naish and colleagues in 2004 asserted that the Romaldo Formation dinosaur fauna is represented by animals that died near shorelines or rivers before being carried out to sea and eventually being fossilised. In 2018, Ariolano and colleagues argued against this scenario, stating that the Irritator holotype mandible was preserved in articulation with the rest of the skull, whereas if the carcass was floating out at sea, this part of the skull would have likely detached in the powerful currents. They also noted that the corpse would have quickly sank due to the osteosclerosis of the skeleton, i.e. the increase of bone density once the animal had died. The research from the investigation therefore concluded that the fossils from the whole Santana group which the Romaldo formation is a part of represented organisms that upon their deaths were buried in their natural habitats instead of being deposited other than in their present position upon death. Like other Spinosaurs, Irritator had semi-aquatic habits, as has been shown in studies of other Spinosaurs through the use of techniques like isotope analysis and bone histology. It has been found that Irritator and its relatives took advantage of aquatic prey and environments, usually marginal and coastal habitats, the latter being present for Irritator, allowing Spinosaurs to occupy a distinct ecological niche, avoiding competition with more commonplace terrestrial theropods. A 2018 study by paleontologist Thomas Arden found that the frontal bones of Irritator, Spinosaurus and Sigil Massasaurus were adapted in being arched, concave on top and narrowed at the front, all features that point towards adaptations for an aquatic lifestyle. These features result in the eyes of the animal being positioned further up on the head than in other theropods, something that is a trait nowadays seen in crocodilian. These traits put together permit an animal to see above the waterline when submerged, indicating that Spinosaurids like Irritator behaved in a similar way to modern crocodilians, keeping their bodies submerged and out of view whilst patrolling their aquatic habitats. In terms of Irritator's lifestyle, Martil and colleagues, upon the discovery of the Irritator holotype, theorised that Irritator, with its elongated snout and unserrated conical teeth, more than likely had a piscivorous or fish-eating diet. Although this was based off of when the animal was regarded as a maniraptoran, these observations still hold true today through the understanding that Irritator was a Spinosaurid. Spinosaurids like Irritator have very narrow and elongated jaws compared to other theropods, and with their relatively uniformly pointed teeth, this jaw setup is quite similar to that of the Indian gharial, the most piscivorous extant crocodilian known. These teeth are designed not for tearing or shearing through flesh like other theropods, but instead are geared more to grub and hold prey in place, a key adaptation to hold on to their more slippery prey. Another adaptation shared with crocodilians includes a stiff secondary palate and reduced antorbital fenestra, attributes that make the skull of an animal more resistant to torsion 
from prey items struggling in the jaws of the predator. Other theropods like Carcharodontosaurus, as an example, lack these features, exchanging this added strength for lighter skull builds, as to maintain a light but also powerful head to help in shearing through the flesh of their prey. The nostrils of Irritator are also shifted far back from the snout tip. This, alongside their secondary palate, help to make respiration possible even if most of the jaw is underwater or while holding prey. The sagittal crest of Irritator is also an indication for pronounced neck musculature, which would have been necessary to quickly close the jaws against the water and to withdraw the head rapidly from said water. Sales and Schultz in 2017 found that Irritator and Baryonychrines might have relied more on their sense of smell in locating prey than Spinosaurus did, since the former had large, lesser attracted nostrils, as well as more room in their skulls for the nasal cavity. Spinosaurus itself, based on the study, would have made heavier use of senses like sight, as well as the mechanoreceptors on the tip of its snout, that in life would have helped Spinosaurus to sense prey moving in the water. But Irritator was not just a pure fish eater, as it and its relatives have been known to prey on other organisms. Baryonyx, a relative of Irritator, has been found with portions of a young iguanodon found inside the skeleton of the specimen, and nation colleagues in 2004 supported the idea that Irritator hunted both aquatic and terrestrial animals as a generalist within its coastal habitat. A tooth belonging to that of Irritator was discovered to still be inserted into the fossil neck vertebral column of an ornithochirid pterosaur. Based on the size of the vertebral column, the pterosaur in life likely had a wingspan of around 3.3 metres when it was still alive. This insightful fossil gives further credence that Irritator and other Spinosaurids hunted both aquatic and terrestrial animals, and gives us a glimpse back into the world of Irritator, the specimen having inspired a large number of paleoart depictions of Irritator feasting upon a hapless pterosaur. It is not known if this Irritator killed the pterosaur or scavenged upon the remains, but the vision into the past provided by the specimen is still nevertheless important to our understanding of these animals. A possible food web of the Romaldo formation was presented in 2018 by Aureliano and colleagues, proposing that Spinosaurines from the formation, including Irritator, would have also preyed upon terrestrial and aquatic crocodiliforms, juveniles of their own species, turtles, as well as small to medium sized dinosaurs, making them apex predators of this particular ecosystem. And with that, I thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this more lengthy look at this unique animal, and I hope you learned something new. Thanks to my recent collaboration on Ben's channel, I have finally reached 1000 subscribers, and I'm so happy I can broadcast my thoughts and topics onto so many people. It's a really cool thing, and I hope to continue making these videos for all of you to enjoy. More paleontology videos will be coming out soon, as well as more New Zealand Bird of the Week instalments so be sure to look out for that. I'm Henry the Paleo Guy, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be. See you later.